Welcome to a very special edition of Our Home, Your Holiday. I'm your host, Yen Tolu. Today we are filming at Flora Market to get us all into the spirit of the most wonderful time of the year. There is one well-known restaurant on the island that is reopening during the joyous season. Census Fine Dining is moving to Radisson Blue Aruba and with this relocation, they get to claim a lot of firsts, such as being the only restaurant in the busy Palm Beach area to offer a chef's table experience. They will also have a la carte. Two concepts under one roof. Here's more. Census Fine Dining is a well-established restaurant brand on this island. They have been serving guests for five years in the low-rise hotel area. But now they are preparing to relocate to a prime location in the high-rise hotel area inside Radisson Blue. The much bigger restaurant space is situated right in the lobby of the hotel. Let's head inside to see the expansion of Senses and how they are giving guests more options. We're going to do a, a two under one roof restaurant concept. That means the old chef's table will be there. That's exactly what we're fixing right here. But we have so much more space and it's so, such a beautiful location that we decided to open up a second concept right next to the other one. Uh, and that will be Senses a la carte. That will mean based on the last five years, the menus, we will make uh, main courses of appetizers and of course our high level uh, desserts, which are made by Gerard and Kelt, will be regularly ordered on off a menu. By offering a la carte and the chef's table experience, Sebastian says they are responding to valuable guest feedback. We often hear that a lot of people said, oh my God, this, this particular dish, that's the best dish I ever had. If you already were with us and you had that certain dish, this is your chance just to come for that certain dish. This beautiful restaurant with floor to ceiling windows has never been utilized to its full potential until now. Luigi Wicks, the general manager of the new property, says they've been waiting patiently for the right partner. Seems to be the perfect fit for both sides. It's not going to be a hotel restaurant. It's going to be a top restaurant within our hotel. So for me, that's just going to position the hotel specifically where we want to. So yes, very, very excited. Construction is currently taking place right now. This is a sneak peek of what the restaurant will look like. On one side, you will have the chef's table experience and on the other side will be dedicated to a la carte experiences. Every intricate detail of the restaurant space is beautiful. Luigi is going to show us one of the best parts. If you're having a guest in and if they want to, you know, just go in there and select one of the top shelf wines, they can go in here. But what is most interesting about this is that if you see in the back, you see those stones, those keep the temperature here at perfect temperature it has to be for a wine. So it's just incredible. Now that we have a good understanding of how incredibly stunning this restaurant will be, let's get into how the chef plans on continuing the high level dishes Census has always offered up with the addition of a la carte. The entrees will be as delicious as it's always been. It's going to be an A5 Wagui plus uh, beef tartare with a beautiful beluga caviar on top uh, and some foie gras. Uh, we're going to have a beautiful tomahawk carved on the table uh, with garnishes, of course. With the move, Senses is re-inspired and kicking it up a notch in every way possible. Opening boxes for uh, our new plates. Beautiful plates. The dishes are coming out more beautiful. Plates are very important for preparations so for showing showing up basically. The addition of senses in the high-rise hotel area is impactful. Being Aruba's, I mean, the touristic destination in Aruba, this is something that we're extremely excited for, looking forward. I mean, we have so many restaurants on the Palm Beach Strip, but we're missing that elevated experience that we will be bringing to Palm Beach. Senses offers their guests a remarkable experience, so if you are looking for a special dining option, make sure to email them censusalacarte at gmail.com to make your reservation. The holidays are all about giving. There is one local family company on this island that offers their buyers the perfect gift every single time, but there is so much more to this reputable local company. Gandelman is known for exclusivity and luxury. This family business has been developing long-standing relationships and trust with its buyers for close to a century now. 
It's not only the customer, it's also the team members. Gary Rodriguez has been a passionate sales associate at Gandelman for a decade. After so many years, he still cherishes every moment. My favorite part is, uh, of course, the company itself. I'm, I'm not here 10 years uh, just to be here. <laughs> I love waking up in the morning, come to work. Besides selling, the interaction that you get with the customers, you get to learn new people every day, have new experiences every day. Let's go back in time and learn how this almost 100-year-old family company began. The Gandelman story goes all the way back to 1931, when a dry cleaning business in Curacao was established by Berta and Gerzen Becker. The entrepreneurial mindset ran in the family as their daughter Fania opened up a high-end clothing retail store in the 1940s. During the 1950s, Brazilian jeweler H. Stern visited Curacao and met Fania and her husband, Morris Gandelman. After a close friendship was developed, Stern gave the Gandelmans exclusivity rights to carry their brand of jewelry on the island of Curacao. After accepting this offer, the first Gandelman store was born, called the Beehive. Morris Gandelman, always a curious artist, he became fascinated with jewelry, less for its monetary value, but more so for the story that each piece tells. Mr. Gandelman spent time in New York learning about goldsmithing to create his own line of jewelry for the store. To him, creating a piece to celebrate one of life's most memorable occasions was incredibly special. The Gandelmans built long-standing relationships with their customers that has trickled down the generations. Mr. Gandelman began acquiring fine European brands such as Gucci and Raymond Wheel in the 70s. With a third generation joining the business, Gandelman decided to open a store on the island of St. Martin. The very first store in Aruba opened in 1981. Gandelman is one of the oldest jewelers in the entire Caribbean. Now in its fourth generation, Gandelman exclusively carries Rolex, Bulgari, David Yurman, and Cartier. Gandelman Holding operates the Cartier Boutique and the Gandelman Store at the Renaissance Mall. Gandelman also maintains a state-of-the-art after-sales service center for watch and jewelry repairs. With extensive training in Switzerland, Gandelman watchmakers are the only ones on the island certified to service Rolex watches. The Gandelman experience extends beyond any purchase. Gandelman is renowned on the island, both among locals and visitors for the level of trust between its customers and sales staff, for the quality of its products and for its unique family history. Gandelman has an extraordinary background in the fine jewelry business. Those on the front lines representing the brands and interacting with customers at the store are enthusiastic about everything that Gandelman stands for. My favorite part of being with Gandelman, uh, wow, uh, there are so many, but <laughs> it's being unique around for the brands you sell. We know our product, the trainings, and we are the only one selling the brands we sell. Our company also owns the Cartier Boutique. I mean, you know, it's just like, there is nowhere else you would find these brands and people knowledgeable and excited about their brands, our brands. In the Western culture, there are many things that make the holidays extra special. It could be some warm hot chocolate with marshmallows on top, or a glazed honey ham, even eggnog perhaps. Well, there is one specific food item on this island that is celebrated, eaten and cooked within many households. We have a very special guest in the kitchen today. So of course, this is a themed holiday episode for our home, your holiday. And in Aruba, we are a very multicultural destination that's adopted quite a few traditions. We're gonna get into one right now. Our special guest, Araceli, speaks Spanish, and I speak English, so we're gonna compromise with me speaking Papimento. Araceli, Hi. bon vini, Gracias. thank you, Gracias. Um, Bisami, ¿qué cosa cocina hoy? Yo ahora estoy haciendo cómo armar la yaca. Ya todo está preparado. Eh, voy a poner aquí el guiso. El guiso está compuesto de carne, caliña y porco. Está así un ayaca. Y bon, ahora, um, ¿cuál país? 
Yo soy de Venezuela, tengo cuatro años aquí en Aruba. Un tradición. Es una un tradición familiar en Navidad. Nosotros eh, tenemos un compartir familiar de vecino. Tú sabes, anteriormente eh, intercambiábamos una yaca con otra, eh, un plato de comida con pan de jamón, pernil, ensalada de galiña. Y la yaca no puede faltar. <laughs> Perfect. Let's get to work. Araceli's says the most important part of the ayacas is the meat stew that makes up most of the filling. Her traditional family recipe from Venezuela calls for stew meat, pork, and chicken. To get the flavor really going, she throws in other ingredients such as onion, chives, paprika, garlic, celery, soy sauce, cooking wine, oil, stock cubes, and much more. So for the sake of TV time, Araceli did prepare the meat portion of the ayacas a night before, but even when it's not for recording or filming purposes, she says you should do that anyways, because then you let the meat soak in all the juices and you let it all marinate overnight. Then it all becomes tastier. Oh my goodness. She's right. Another star of the ayacas is of course the cornmeal, which holds everything together. The secret to Araceli's ayacas is what she does with the corn flour. She kneads the flour with chicken broth beforehand, which is a step, according to her, that cannot be missed. Yo siempre preparo la carne y el puerco juntos. El, la, la galiña la preparo aparte. Hiervo la galiña, lavo bien la galiña, La hiervo, le coloco ingredientes este, para que quede un duchi sabor y uso esa agua para hacer la masa, que es esta agua, tengo aquí, que ya usé. Araceli says she thinks it is great that the island has adopted this delicious tradition during the holidays from her home country, but there are a few differences between the two typical recipes. En, en Aruba normalmente le, le ponen, hacen su guiso eh, con galiña, he visto, eh, y también usan, yo uso racenchi, en Venezuela se usa est esta pasa pequeña, aquí usan la, la pasa más grande, y, y cacahuetes, también le ponen a la yaca. Y también le, le colocan pica, aquí le gusta mucho el pica. So it sounds like the few main differences include the Aruba Nayakas being made usually with only chicken instead of raisins, plums are in place, and some prefer it spicy. It is time to assemble and wrap. To start, make sure you have a piece of dry plantain leaf. Next, take a small ball of cornmeal and dip it in chicken broth. Then spread the cornmeal around the plantain leaf. Place a generous portion of the meat stew on top of the plantain leaf, then top the filling off with ingredients such as carrots, green peppers, olives, and raisins. Time to wrap it all up. Give the cornmeal a bit of a shape before fully wrapping it. A ball of yarn is necessary. After the ayacas are all wrapped, drop them into a pot of boiling water to cook for approximately 45 minutes. With some TV magic, the 45 minutes is done and we can take one out of the pot to unwrap. After all the hard work that Araceli put in, it's time to taste. Mm, that is so, so good. Everything is tasty. Everything. The filling. Mm -hmm. Araceli also thinks it's good. Not only because she made it, but because it's actually very good. And that's a wrap on the mouth-watering ayacas with no pun intended. My mouth is watering just from watching that story. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the warmthness of this particular episode. Make sure to join us next Monday night, Tel Aruba, 7.30 p.m., right here on this channel as we venture on to more topics with a holiday theme, but with as much of a local twist to it as possible. I'm your host, Yantolu. A very special thank you to Flora Market for having us today. We'll see you next time.